Okay, can you hear me? Share my screen. All right, so we're back. Let me wait for these guys. Let me wait. So. First of all, so is it R or R prime? Which one do we have? I think we got a wrong one, isn't it? Which one do we have? We are right now. We are, uh, are the first, the first and second uh, uh, formulas. Are we using the first one or the second one? You see, the hill top, the top mm. is the R, isn't it? And then the R prime is the bottom. Is that not the case? Yes, the top is the R. Yes. Yes. So the top. The so it means it means what we have. Yes. What we've been given is the R, not the R prime. Yes. So the formula to use will be the left one. We have okay, the this, first one. This one, yes. Yes. The R H over the capital H. Exactly. So what don't we have? What do we have? We have the elevation of the hilltop, don't we? We have. And then we have R. So we are left with what? The flying heights. Mm. Okay. So H is equal to 1,600, right? Above the two. Yes. If you go back to the question, it says that the hilltop lies at an elevation of 1,600. Mm -hmm. So that's H, smaller H. Yes. So it's a matter of h, which is the flying height. But then the scale, we can use the scale. Scale is equal to f over h. And we have the focal length in inches, and we have the scale. So all we need to do is to make h the subject, and we get f over s, right? Yes, please. Okay. Try the scale. So H then equal to six inches over. So if you divide over, then it's gonna be a, a multiplication, isn't it? So yes. one one over what's what's the scale there? Twelve thousand. Okay. Yes. All right. Twelve thousand. So we end up multiplying six by twelve thousand. What you give us was seventy-two. Is it? Yes, please. Seventy-two thousand inches. All right, which can be converted to feet, but it's okay. You can leave it there. And then put it in the formula D equal to R 2.822 inches times 1600 feet all over. Line height is what? Line height is. It we just determine it, isn't it? Seven, seventy-two thousand. Yes. Feet. So feet or cancel feet. Kind of thing. We calculate D. All right. So back to that. So we're gonna obtain this scenario. So we, I mean, honestly, if you work it down. The fly height to become six thousand feet. We could have done that. Why? Because mm. because twelve inches make one foot. Are you okay? So that is why he's able to reduce it. 
and then he's getting this. So we can all double check the answer. Get that. Now relief displacement can be used to determine the height of an object. I think that's interesting, isn't it? <laughs> can be used. I went quiet because I got a little migraine anyway, but I think it's gone. Um, so this one, I'm, I'm interested in this because I have an app for determining the height of an object. And I'm, I'm thinking, did I even consider this? <coughs> no. But I think this is just basic geometry, it's just simple geometry. So these are different between the top and bottom of the objects. The relief displacement, flying heights, camera above, please. Okay, so uh, we can have an example like this. Please, when you get a question like this, you should be able to solve it. I, I won't go through it. It's okay, because I see it to be so easy to do. It's all right. Vertical for you take like this. Um, and then you put it in. You need to simply understand the English that is being spoken in the question. Mm. You need to know what one is R, which one is, that's all. So you can get zero. The height, one, the, height the scale, the focal length. If you're able to get all those things, yes, you can just fix them. You, the yes, problem. yes, very easy. Just fix them in and you'll be done. Okay. Yes. So if you look at this photograph, you can see the displacements. You look on this photograph, you can see that from here to here is a displacement. Um, but normally it's radial. It's radial because you have to measure it along this line from the center. Then you realize that this, the bottom here has been displaced from this by this. So this is the D you are looking at. Okay. It's a distance. So if you take this building, for example, then this corner, the top here is displaced from the bottom by a distance, that distance D. Are you okay? I think it's so easy to appreciate some of these things. All right, so let's move on. All right, so let's move on. Flying height of a vertical photograph. So you can use a quadratic equation to compute it, or you can use iteration to find the vertical <laughs> photograph. For example, in this equation, we can solve for h, all right? We can write the whole formula in a quadratic format. Look at how big it is. Look at the formula, look at how big it is. You see? <laughs> The thing about photogrammetry is that the formulas are so huge. You wonder, yeah? <coughs> a, B, C, you solve for, you know, a quadratic equation, if you have 2x plus, 2x squared plus, 3x plus, mm -hmm. so you can solve for x, you know, get the root of the equation, blah, blah, blah. Every JSS girl can do it. All right. You can take, so apart from using that formula, you can use the iterative approach where you know that there's a relationship between the flying height, a certain distance, you know, so you keep varying it, try, try and error, try and error, until you get something that is appropriate. This one is also passing. So that is it. So we can talk about error, errors, okay? The more significant error sources are errors in photogrammetric, to graphic measurements, errors in ground control, shrinkage, okay, that's a terror. Tilting photography is there. And yeah, we can actually work it out, find out the error. And then, but I'm not gonna worry about this one, so please skip it. This one can be handled by the adjustment lecture. Error population. All right, guys, so this is it for vertical photographs. Is that okay? Any question on vertical photographs? Scale over flat terrain, scale over variable terrain, ground coordinates, displacement due to relief. These are the things that you need to know 
in uh, okay, the scale of the photograph. I, said, I think it's okay. very easy to appreciate that. You have any question you can ask if you don't. I think I'll be going on to talk about tilted photographs. All right. So what's a tilted photograph? If I may ask the class, what's a tilted photograph again? What's a tilted photograph? What is a tilted photograph? What is a tilted photograph? It's a photograph that has the shape or size. The photograph that has what? Lost its shape. Hey. In which uh, uh, please, 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 taking please. the camera when the camera did not uh, over, <laughs> over, I don't, I don't know how to do it. I feel my flower. No, but when you listen to the name for total photograph, what does it tell you? It's a so, photograph that in which the camera that was used to take it is tilted about it uh, vertical. Vertical. Mm. Hey, Charlie, we do, we do. Anyway, uh, so I'm going to put this on YouTube. So please. Oh, okay. please take note that anything you say, the whole world will hear. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh. anyway, so yes, take note of that. I want to ask you a question. If you're not sure, don't say it. Um, we start with the this is how a total photograph looks like. Okay, we have the exposure station. The person who is talking where you are, tell them to bring their voice down. You are in a lecture. Come on. So this is the exposure station. All right, that, that is it over there. Then the vertical will drop straight down like this. So that's the vertical, right? Then the photograph that we have, okay, we can just map it, the ends of the photograph to the ground, to the ground coverage from the exposure station, okay? Can be depicted with these lines that goes through the edges of the photograph. So this is the bottom end of it. So there you have a block. So when you took the photograph, yeah, this is what you got, okay? But then there's some something interesting that has actually happened. The photograph is tilted, okay? So it's tilted away from the vertical by an angle T. So this is the actual, you know, principal line. Are you okay? The principal line goes through the center of the photograph, the perspective center, which is like the L, the exposure station, all the way to the ground. Are you okay? So this one, anytime you, you turn the camera, it moves, right? The principal line contains the nadia point. Are you okay? And then the exposure station. No, obviously, the principal point, and then the, the nadia point. Are you okay? So there's the nadia point is somewhere here. All right. The principal point is in the center, and then the nadia point is actually somewhere displaced like that. Are you okay? Okay, so the vertical and then the center of the photograph have a certain relationship. So the nadia point and the principal point define the principal line. Okay, so I think that is better. The principal point and the nadia point. Are you okay, and this ISO center is the line that bisects the nadia point and then the principal point. Are you okay? So we can talk about P, 
this is power points, media points in, and then I, the I soup center. Are you okay? All right. Now, it's also important. So I'm spending time on this because this is the, this is the understanding. This is what gives you the understanding of what we are talking about. The rest is easy. The angle formed here is the angle of tilt, T. Okay, so the angle here is T. So the tilt angle is all right. At the same time, we can also define the swing. So the swing is the angle that is formed as a result of the tilt from the principal line to the north, more or less. The north is like the y axis. Are you okay? More or less. It's like that. So when you look at this one, the north also goes that way. Okay, and do that. Okay. And then the prince, the representation of the principal line on the ground is actually at an angle of alpha from the north, which we will call the azimuth. Okay, so as a result of the tilt, we have, you know, a tilt, a swing, and then an azimuth. Okay, all these define the orientation of the photograph. All right. So you need to understand principal, the principal plane will be obviously the plane formed between the shaded line, the shaded area. That's a principal plane. Okay. Shaded area. It's actually made up of the vertical and then the principal line. Are you okay? If you actually join them up, you have you know, if you have a plane going through the principal line and the vertical, you have the principal plane. Okay. All right. Great. So the principal line goes to the center of the photograph. Always remember that. It is actually this line here, this one. This is the principal line. This is the vertical, this one is the vertical. Okay. This is the center of the photograph, all right? The tilt angle is formed around here. That's the azimuth angle, alpha. And then swing is formed this way, all right? S is swing, all right? All right, now the, that's what we call the church angles. What are the church angles? The church angles are the azimuth, the swing, and the tilt. Now, this is as opposed to omega phi kappa. So, omega phi kappa system is the alternate, you know, orientation angles to the church angles. So if you want to find out how something has tilted, you have the option of using the omega phi kappa system or use the church angles. But I think the omega phi kappa is used a lot in photogrammetry. But in total photographs, we find it very important to make use of the church angles. Okay. All right. So now let's look at the ISO center. And I've already talked about the ISO center. It, it's actually found by finding the intersection of the bisector of the principal line and then the vertical. So the vertical is this one. This is the principal line. The line that bisects it is this one. Okay, so now this is the, the ISO center the intersection of the bisector of the vertical and then the principal line. Are you okay? Meanwhile, the nadia point is the intersection between the vertical and then the photo plane, the photo itself. All right, so the nadia point, the ISO center, and then the principal point, they all lie on a certain line called the principal line. Are you okay? And the principal plane is formed between the vertical and the principal line. So these are the questions I'll be asking you in the exam. You know, whether it's online or face-to-face, -face, I'll be asking questions that will let you tell me whether you actually follow. All right. So ISO center, axis of tilt, obviously, yes, T. So, so it's divided into two. 
And because you buy the age two, we are getting the person who is talking. I'm muting you now. I think I should be able have your mic on. Um, so T over two. So if the tilt is T, then the isocenter is obtained by dividing the T into half. Then you get T over two. All right. Beautiful. So what? It's the question that we should always ask. We need to bring the tilde photograph into the same coordinate system, you know, which is convenient, a convenient coordinate system, which is the photo coordinate system. So we make use of the auxiliary coordinate system. Auxiliary means helper. Auxiliary means you are helping. So we, we, we go through a certain coordinate system just to, you know, bring the whole tilted coordinate system, you know, into something looking more like a vertical coordinate system. Uh, if, uh, what do you call it? A photo coordinate, a normal photo coordinate system. Because, because as a result of the tilt, the center of the photograph is even displaced. And we need to factor that into it. Are you okay? If someone gives you a set of coordinates on a tilted photograph, we should be able to now do a conversion that, you know, helps us to relate. Are you okay? All right. So there's a, there's a, there's a whole of, you know, there's a rotation, there's a shift that has happened as a result. All right, so until swing asimov system, auxiliary coordinate system required for some computations. So we make use of a rotation and a translation. So the shift is the translation. Is that all right? The origin at the nadir point, y axis coincides with the principal line, x axis is perpendicular to the principal line at the nadir point clockwise, blah, blah, blah. This diagram does a good job as explaining what is happening. Okay. So when we look at this diagram, let me move this up a bit. Then you can see that as a result of the tilt, we have a swing, all right? So there's a swing, there's a rotation of theta and a swing of S, is that okay? We only tilted the thing, but really a lot is happening. Are you okay? There's a rotation, then we can have a swing, and then the center of the photograph has itself shifted. All right. So you can see the center is now here. Something that was here, no? Because we've shifted it. This is where the vertical now is. No, it's not the center of the photograph. The vertical is now here. Okay. So this is the ideal situation for the vertical photography. Is that okay? So we have that shift of from N to O, and we can quantify that as F tan T, which we can explain why, because this whole tilt is as a, this whole shift is as a result of a tilt of T, is that okay? All right, so I'll show you briefly in this diagram. Okay, it's not here. I'll show you, I'll show you. All right, so let's go to the board and let me quickly, you know, where is my thing? Whiteboard, question. Here. Microsoft whiteboard, okay, there you are. Okay, so, Let me see if I can use this. All right, so this is the vertical line. Okay. And then um, we have the photograph is like lying somewhere here. There's a tilt of T. Okay. So if there's any displacement, then opposite of adjacent, we have tan T. So this distance, so this is O, this is N. Okay, so between O and N, tan T is equal to O N over F. So O N is equal to F tan T, all right? 
So if you go back on that diagram, that's why we are having the F tan T here, that displacement. All right. So there are a couple of coordinate systems that we can see over here. All right. We can have the photo coordinate. So let's look at point A. So at point A, we have about three sets of coordinates for that same point. We have X A, Y A. That is one set of coordinates measured in the normal photograph, you know, photographic coordinate system. Then we have the auxiliary coordinate system. Okay, before the translation, there's a, a rotation. Is that okay? And then there's a shift. Okay, so there's a rotation of theta. All right, that will now create a certain coordinate system, x prime prime and then y prime prime. Then we need to shift it down. Okay, when we shift it by f tan t, then we'll end up at the original, okay, we get to end here, which is the reality, what is actually happening. Are you okay? All right, so this is like some kind of coordinate transformation that we are doing. All right. Now it's important for us to recognize that theta is S minus 180, okay? Why? Because the line on a straight line, the angle on a straight line is what? 180. So 180 plus theta is equal to S. And then S minus theta is 180. All right, also the rotation, this is how you do rotation. In any coordinate transformation, the rotation normally is of this form. Are you okay? So when you rotate one coordinate system to the other, you end up having, you know, the new coordinate system, which is this one. Okay, so we just rotate from that one. So this photo coordinate system, cos, cosine, of course, cos minus sine, and then sine cos. Okay. All right. So you can append a subscript to it. You can put small a here, small a here, small a. You get x a prime prime. So that means point a. You can put b there, s b prime prime, s b cos theta minus y b. Are you getting that? We can do that in the rotation, are you okay? So let me even make it a bit clearer here. You're not really saying you don't understand, but obviously, if you have a coordinate system like this, and then you decide to rotate it, are you okay, rotate this coordinate system by an angle of theta, this line becomes that the y, the y as it tilts by that angle, all right? And then the x as it also tilts by a similar angle, theta. So this is theta. Then the same theta is here, okay? So now the coordinates in this system before the transformation will be x a, y a for point a. For, for point B to be S, B, Y, B. Is that okay? Now in the new coordinate system in which we have, so this will be X, S prime prime, per the example we are doing, oh, sorry, this is Y. Y, Y prime prime. And then we can have x x prime prime rotated about theta is that okay then it means that you knew your x a y a and now you have moved into a new coordinate system which is actually s prime y prime so you'll be determining s prime prime y prime prime as a result of the rotation so as a result of the tilt something has happened to our coordinate system Okay, there's been a change, and that's what we are trying to, you know, find out. And we are saying that we can do we can use this formula cos minus sine cos t 
theta i k and you can do sine theta cos theta and then append your x i k y x y plus minus i again that so you would have obtained the rotation all right it's very important to simply understand what we are doing instead of just watching it so the translation, I think I've already covered this. So I think I, I just did this for you. NO is F tan theta, all right? Because of the, you know, translation in the auxiliary coordinate system. All right. So the final auxiliary coordinate system will now have to take care of the shift. That's all. Are you okay? And then we are here. So we now have an auxiliary coordinate system, which kind of is like, you are, it takes you from what you were to what you have become, photo coordinate system, to the shifted one, I okay, as a result of the tilt. So the tilt causes a rotation and a shift and a translation. The tilt causes a rotation and a translation, okay. All right, so it's like a coordinate system change. Now take note of sine theta is equal to sine minus sine s. This is trigonometry, cos theta equals minus cos s. All right, and then we can now write a few things. One of the things that we need to take note of is the scale of a tilted photograph. Is that okay? So I think that will be one of the first things that we'll do um yeah so this one i think we are used we know this one the shift only affects the y also take note of that in the diagram that i showed you earlier on it doesn't affect the x so here is just the rotation as it is which means that s prime is equal to x prime prime are you okay s prime is equal to x prime prime okay but we can't say the same thing for y prime. So y prime is equal to, you have your s y prime prime plus the shift, which is f tan t. Okay, so we need to understand. It's always good to appreciate the formula. Apart from just memorizing it, of course, the memorization there, you may need to do it. All right, we shouldn't mix, do not mix formulas from the two. Okay, so don't mix prime prime with I and that. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Scale, scale of a total photograph has a very interesting formula. The derivation is here, but let's not waste time. So the scale of, of a total photograph is given by this interesting formula here. Okay. So here, F is the focal length, T is the tilt. Y prime, we know that that is the auxiliary coordinate system. Okay. And uh, so this is the coordinate for a certain point. The scale will be for that point. It's okay, so it should be varying everywhere on the photograph. So when you take a, a vertical photograph, the scale varies on the photograph. When you take the scale of a flat terrain, um, it seems then that one is f over h simple. Are you okay? But variable terrain, the scale starts varying per point. But when it gets tilted, so tilt and relief are always issues in photogrammetry. All right, now this H here is the height of the point above day two, as we know, are you okay? So the scale is also varying per, not only the tilt, but also the height of the point above day two. So that is, that is basically it. I don't know if it's easy to remember this formula. And we can also talk about the coordinates, the Y coordinates of a tilted photograph that we mix up, you know, these coordinates, guys. So let's do this example. All right, so guys, we are ending the class with this one. Um, let's all start calculating, giving the following, compute the scale at points A and B. It's okay. 
So what do we know and what don't we know in this? So the formula for scale, we need to have that in mind. Okay, so F over cos T, which is actually one over cos T is actually sec T. All right, so we know that formula for that and we know y prime sine t okay so let me just grab this one and then we can just go here all right so this is the formula for the scale of a photograph so s the question is, what is the scale at points A and B? So we can look at points A first. So S A. Well, what's the scale? So that that will mean we don't use capital letter. We use small small letter. Remember that. So we write S A equal to F all over cos tilt minus y coordinates a prime sine c all divided by flying height minus the height at point a capital a here for ground i think we've already talked about that Right, so we've been provided yeah. values. Three degrees, 27. So I think we have all the values that we need. <laughs> all right, you just have to put a calculator to it. We have focal length, which is actually six inches. All right. We have till T, three degrees, 27 second minutes, 27 minutes. So you have a way of converting it. Um, fly height, 7,850. 7,850 meters. Uh, the height of the point about it to H is 160. One sixty. Hey, are we getting meters in there somewhere? No, it's not meters, it's feet. We will miss metric. Are you okay? And imperial, take note of that. So this is feet. This is feet. Doesn't matter. You should you can go to America. Our Americans can come here. So no metric, no imperial. I think even survey and mapping division, they are still using some of the imperial, making reference to imperial measurements. All right. So what is left is our Y A prime, which we do not know from the information given, but we have coordinates for X A Y A. So what's the formula for y a prime? So remember, this is where the shift is, isn't it? So y a prime is actually y a prime prime plus f tan t. All right, and y a prime is where we do the x x a sine theta plus y a cos theta so plus f tan t okay so photo coordinates now can be mapped are you okay we cannot not can map, we can actually yes we can map them what i mean is that we can actually start putting in the value of x which has been given 
So this is equal to x is 3.154. Uh, sine theta. So what have we given? We're giving S instead of theta. So S is equal to 272 degrees. 272 degrees. So it means theta is equal to what? So remember there was a relation between S was like that. Okay. S minus theta equals 180. So theta is equal to what? 180 minus S. Well, so here you have to watch it. Are you okay? Uh -huh. So S minus theta. It's called 180, You're looking for theta. Theta goes there, S minus one. So 272 minus 180. Okay, guys, so then you put in the coordinates, okay? This is giving us eight, so sign eight. Are you okay? Plus Y, A, the value has been given. All right, so complete this for yourself. Obviously, it's been worked out here. 272 minus 180 is 92. All right, I said eight, but I think it's 92. Please, I think I'm tired and hungry. Guys, I'm, we are going to meet again same time next week to continue. We haven't, we are not done, is it okay? So enjoy the weekend and um, yes.